Hey guys, welcome to another Essential Tutorial. So today I'm going to be showing you some basic workflows of how you can go from Houdini to Substance Painter and how you can unwrap your models using a few different techniques. Um, I'm going to show you how to use single channel UVs and also how to use UDIM workflows uh, for use within Redshift within Houdini. You can use any kind of renderer, it doesn't really matter, but for this case using Redshift, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to do it manually and also how we can use this really cool plugin to automate this workflow. So in this case, I just have this really basic demo. If we wanted to have this paint stroke go across a bunch of different boxes, we're going to need to unwrap our models in a way that allows us to flatten all our UVs. So I just applied a basic auto UV on our box, and you can see that it automatically stacked all of the boxes uh, using the copy to point stop. So in order to have them all spread out, we're going to need to use something called a UV layout node. And in here, using the scale set to maximum, it's going to automatically spread out those UVs so that we can render it out as a single channel. Now, if we play around with the fixed scale, we can start to stack more within the single tile. Using the pack into setting, if we set it to UDIM this time though, and we play around with the fixed scale, we can actually control the amount of those UDIM tiles that are generated. So for this example, I'm gonna create something like five UDIM tiles and playing around with this spread islands to all available space, it'll actually, uh, create padding between all of the different UVs to maximize the space within each tile. So playing around with the tile grid and the column setting, for this example, it's not really applic applicable, but if you have a ton of different tiles, you can control the visual spacing, uh, which is good. Um, in order to visualize our UVs, I'm going to use something called the UV quick shade node, and that'll just allow us to view UVs within our viewport. So again, I'm going to take you through the manual way first, and then I'll show you how we can automate this to save a lot of time. So first we're going to create a ROP FBX output node and we're going to output our FBX um, for that single UV tile. Now in this case, if you are interested in using UDIMs, I'm going to create two different uh, channels here just so you can see how both workflows work. So in this first one, let's just create our single UV tile and then I'm going to duplicate the UV shade and then I'm also going to duplicate our uh, ROP FBX output as well. So just to keep things organized, let's select all of these and let's just create a network view and call it single UV. And for the second one, let's call it UDIM UVs, just so we can kind of keep organized. And so let's manually export each FBX here. It's the first one and for the second one, the UDIMs version. And let's hit save to disk. So jumping into Substance here, let's create a new project. I'm going to create, create a PBR metallic roughness, leaving it at 1024, and we can leave all the settings the same. Now, you can go and bake, bake out those mesh maps. You don't have to, um, but it's just generally when I work within Substance, I like to as it exposes uh, some really nice geometry features that can help create better materials. So let's just create a really basic uh, diffuse texture. Let's go and just paint some red stroke over this and you can see that it's painting over our UVs as expected. Now if you want to get this back into Houdini, we're going to have to go to file and we're going to have to export those textures. So let's export those textures. Let's set the output directory and I'm going to leave all the settings the same and let's just hit export. So now if I check on my hard drive, you can see that it exported all those texture maps correctly. Um, let's go ahead and do the same for our UDIM textures. So this time when we're importing our UDIM FBX, we just have to enable this use UV tile workflow in order to make sure it brings in all of our UVs properly. Now if I zoom in using our UV view, you can see that those five UV tiles are all there. Uh, again, I'm going to bake the mesh maps just so you can see how this looks. And this isn't really a substance uh, tutorial, so to speak. I'm going to keep it really basic just for now. Um, it's just to really show you the workflow of how you can bring uh, these assets between these two applications. So again, I'm going to just paint something really basic and go file export textures. Again, set the output path, and then let's go ahead and hit export as well. Checking on the hard drive, it did uh, export everything correctly. So let's do it manually. Let's go and now apply these textures in Houdini using Redshift. So let's create a material node here, and let's go into our mat view, and we're going to need to use an RS material builder node and let's just create the first one here, and then uh, we can duplicate it after. So in order to bring in that texture from Substance, we're gonna need to use an RS Texture node, and we're gonna need to just apply our first R Diffuse. 
you're going to need to repeat all these steps for all the texture maps like your metallic roughness etc but i'm just going to show you the diffuse map just for now just for illustrative sake so let's duplicate that and if you want to do it with udims for instance you can see our five uh, uh, materials per channel so i'm going to select first the diffuse base color 1001 and in order to have our udims brought in correctly you're going to have to replace the 1001 with uh, the bracket udim bracket and that means that it's going to bring in all of the texture sets correctly so let's go ahead and apply each of the materials onto um, our object and using the single uv tile you can see that now that texture is being rendered correctly and in the udim uvs if we go to that material and apply it that's also working correctly if it looks like this for instance just using the in the udim version if i bring in the texture sampler and the base color and i just apply the first 001 and i don't change out the path to include this bracket zero uh, udim bracket it's not going to work correctly you'll see that it's going to look wonky so if it's done correctly you'll see your textures looking like they do in substance painter cool so moving on i'm also going to show you how we can use fbx or usd and unwrap these using the different primitives that are inside it so let's go and unpack from polygons because this is a usd we're going to have to do that in order to be able to access the polygons on here and you can see by default there's no texture maps or no uh, uvs included by default so let's go ahead and generate those using the auto uv um, node and it does a pretty good job within the uv view of unwrapping those uvs using a uv quick shade we can also preview our uh, uvs within the viewport um, so for this first output, I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to do the same thing. For the first one, I'm going to have the single UV output, and then the second one, I'll show you the UDIM workflow as well. So let's go and path this like so, and let's just keep organized by labeling it, call it single UV, and I'm going to duplicate uh, it in a second here. So let's do the manual FBX output for this one. And I'm going to create a separate channel over here. So for this workflow, we're going to need to use a connectivity node in order to separate each primitive into its own piece. And in the uh, for each loop, the reason why we're not going to want to use the class as the um, piece that's going to be uh, iterating through is because it'd be close to 1,200 plus pieces, as you can see here. What we're actually going to want to use is for each name. So now for each named primitive meaning you know part each piece of the lamp uh, like the main components it's going to loop through those and it'll allow us to unwrap each piece of the lamp uh, properly so i'll show you what i mean in a second here if i go to single pass as i loop through the single pass on each one of these uh, looped iterations we're going to be able to unwrap each one of these main named primitives so let's go ahead and add a uv layout as we did before and it does a pretty good job of unwrapping it, but the problem is that it's not generating our UDIMs correctly. So in order to solve this, we're going to use a little expression. So we're going to go into the 4H begin one, and we're going to generate a little uh, node that allows us to uh, iterate um, within our expression. And all I'm going to be doing is adding literally one every time it loops. So on the first loop, it'll be 1001, on the second loop, 1002, on the third, 1003, and so on and so forth. So basically, every named primitive is going to be able to have its own UDIM tile. So if uh, I write this out correctly, uh, which I didn't, uh, let me just add another quote here and remove one from here. You'll see that now as the loop happens, you can left click on, on default UDIM to make sure that it's uh, executing that expression correctly. Each one of the name primitives now has its own UDIM tile as expected. And changing the columns, you'll, you'll see the layout uh, visualized a bit different. But basically now we can leave all the other settings the same as that looks like that should work pretty well. So let's go ahead and add a quick UV shade again. And just so we can visualize the tiles, and let's keep it organized and name it here. And then finally, we're gonna need another uh, FBX output node. So in this case, rather than doing it the manual way, I'm gonna show you this cool plugin I found, um, which allows you to kind of automate some of this workflow for going between Houdini and Painter. So it's called uh, Substance Painter Live Link, 
by Solado Studio, I think. Exoto, I don't, I don't know, something like that. Um, but it works pretty well. I haven't had really any issues with it. Um, so what it allows you to do, if you have it installed here, you'll see this SP link button. And what you're gonna wanna do is open it in Houdini. And then you're also gonna wanna open it up in Painter. It's gonna open up this window for you. And if it's connected properly, you'll see the app ID. And I'm just gonna set the preset to standard surface. Now within Houdini, let's hit our null output node and hit send. And now it's gonna send that entire model over to Substance Painter for painting. And if I check my UVs here, you'll see that it brought in my UVs correctly. And I'm just gonna do some really quick textures again, just for illustrative purposes. So if I just paint this uh, on here like so, and then go back into the plugin view, you can set your render to Redshift or whatever render you're using. And you can just set your output path and your uh, output size. So those are the only settings really I had to mess with. And for this one, you're gonna also wanna change the name to something that uh, you want your material name to be within Houdini. It just helps you keep organized. So in this case, I'm gonna call it Lamp Single so that when I export Lamp Single um, and hit Send, those materials are now gonna be brought into Houdini. And when I go to the matte view, you're gonna see that's the name that was brought in and named on my material. So if I go into Lamp Single, you'll see that all of those texture channels were now generated properly and it brought in the correct path to where it was saved on my hard drive. So it just saves a ton of time for not having to relink and regenerate these redshift materials within Houdini. And especially if you're doing a lot of uh, painting within Substance, it's just a really great way to save time um, and avoid a lot of that manual labor. So let's test this. Let's put a material node and let's assign the lamp single material we just generated from Painter. And let's go to our render view and test it. And there you go. You can see that it indeed worked correctly. And that's exactly what we painted from Substance being rendered within Redshift in Houdini. So now for, um, for the UDIM workflow, the only thing you need to change is the workflow needs to switch to UDIMs and we can hit send again. And that just makes sure that our UVs are brought in properly. And now if I go to the UV view, you can see that our UDIM UVs were uh, brought in properly, which is nice. And again, I'm just gonna do some really basic painting just to illustrate purposes. Um, and as I'm painting here, you can see that it's painting across all our UV tiles. So let's go ahead and change the preset to standard surface UDIMs. Uh, I'm gonna keep it in TIFF 16, 1024 by 1024, set our output path. And again, I'm gonna to wanna to change the texture material name. So I'm gonna go texture underscore material. I'm gonna change it to lamp underscore UDIMs. And let's just select that and hit send. Now in Houdini, if I go back to the matte view, you're gonna see that it indeed brought in that material correctly. And what's nice about this is because it knows uh, UDIMs, it properly names your file paths to include that UDIM expression function here. So that's really nice. And it means that for all these different texture files, we don't have to go and manually change that. So let's test this out again. Let's change the material here to lamp underscore UDIM, go to a render view, and boom, there you go. That looks correct to me. So one other thing you need to uh, maybe change is if you want to use emissive channels or you want to use opacity channels, you're going to need to add these manually in Painter. And the plugin will automatically add these into the channel uh, view. If we go to channels, you see that those are now going to be exported as well. And let's just create a really quick example so you can actually see what I'm talking about. If we create an opacity uh, channel, let's just create a fill layer just so that we for sure have 100% opacity. And then let's just create a painting layer. And I'm just gonna paint away uh, some of the mesh with opacity um, set to zero, just so you can see it working correctly in Houdini. So now if I test this out in Painter, you can see that the mesh uh, is rendering correctly. The opacity uh, is transparent there. And now if I go and re-export this material and then check it in Houdini, because we set those extra channels, you can now see that it exported an emissive layer and an opacity layer and properly linked it for us, which is really nice. So let's make sure it's working correctly here. If we just go and render, you should see that it now has the opacity channel included. Cool. So one uh, last thing I wanna talk about here is, uh, this is a workflow that was inspired by Adrian Lambert, but if you want to uh, work with high dense resolution meshes, 
this is just a great way to be able to divide meshes up. In this case, um, I just use a really simple sphere with a mountain sop, uh, but you get the idea. So we're going to use a labs poly slice node, and it's going to slice slice our mesh into these multiple primitives here. And using the connectivity sop, we can loop through each one of the primitives. Using a single pass, you can see each one of these primitives individually. And what it means is that we can then use the exact same workflow as before. So I can use the auto UV to auto unwrap each one of those pieces. And then I can use the UV layout sop in order to have each one of those pieces have their own UDIM tile. And now using the attribute delete, we're going to delete the color channel just so it's not uh, visually there. And then I'm going to fuse our mesh back together so that any of the sliced polygons are, are no longer uh, separated. It's going to fuse everything nicely back together. So let's test that out. Um, rather than manually export it, let's go ahead and use our handy plugin again. I'm going to go to SP Link and make sure it's connected, which it is. I'm going to again set our workflow to UDIMS and hit send. Now back in Painter, you can see it properly brought in our mesh, which is nice. And I'm going to go and quickly bake it first, just so we can use some of the smart materials on it. I'm going to just set a 1024 just for the sake of speed. And once it's done here, I'm noticing that the normals were not done correctly. So that's one nice thing about this workflow is you can go ahead and add, you know, another SOP uh, or another mod or node back in here. And because I had to fix the, no uh, the normals, I just sent it back over to Painter and it automatically updates all of your painted layers uh, as they were within Painter. So it's just a really nice way to work non-destructively as you can make changes within Houdini and send those changes over to Painter without losing any of your work. So let's just do a really quick uh, smart material on here just for illustrative purposes. And once you, you have something that you like here, uh, all you have to do is the same thing. Just go to export, select your output path. Uh, I'm going to change the output material name again, just so we can easily find it within Houdini afterwards. This is especially important when you have multiple materials going, it just makes it easy to find. Uh, and let's apply it here. And in a moment here, you'll see that it properly brought in all of our UDIM textures. Anyway, guys, I hope uh, you learned something new and uh, helps you out. And I will see you next time.